is about imminent results on the Higgs boson from the Large Hadron Collider experiments are appearing in blogs, social media and newspapers all over the world. Meanwhile, thousands of physicists are carefully analyzing the data, looking not only for the Higgs, but for many other new phenomena. First of all, the data had to be collected. The beams have uh, particles and they are colliding and we detect the products of these collisions in the different subdetectors that uh, form a CMS. So it means that since the collision takes place until all the signature is recorded in a tape, this is the process of data taking. When the collisions take place, we need to have a very fast uh, system that decides whether this collision is interesting or not. These data have then to be reconstructed using complex algorithms and the massive computing power of the grid. The data that we actually collect from the detector is raw data, which is just millions of voltage readings from all the different parts of the detector at the time that we had a collision. And so what we want in the physics analysis is more uh, the reconstructed particles, so the energies and directions of the particles coming out of the collision. So we go from this raw data to this reconstructed data um, by running very sophisticated, complicated computer programs over the data um, in order to try and reconstruct the particles coming out of the collisions. And then this is what people use for doing the final physics analysis for trying to find evidence of the Higgs or this kind of thing. They use these reconstructed particles. Then comes the data analysis, where the physicists search these events, looking for gems in a pile of rubble. So physics analysis is the process of taking the billions of events that we've recorded and trying to look for patterns, to sift through them, to look for interesting events, to look for unusual events, and to look for patterns like a clustering of events in mass. In the billions of events, we have perhaps a few thousand top quark events, for example, or perhaps just a handful of Higgs candidates if the Higgs boson exists. Other processes can accidentally mimic the same signature that we look for, these patterns that we look for, that may be produced by a top quark or a Higgs boson and trying to prove that we all understand all of this and proving also to our colleagues within the experiment that we understand all of this. So documenting it, discussing it together, reviewing it and so on so that we're confident when we go to a conference or we put out a paper we, we fully understand the data and we can draw a firm conclusion. Let me give you an example. Imagine you take a photo of a rabbit in a tall grass. It would be very hard for you to spot this rabbit uh, immediately. Now imagine that you take 20 more photos of uh, just random uh, landscape and you superimpose them on the picture of the rabbit. It will be even harder for you to spot this rabbit. And that's exactly the situation we are in because Accelerator performs so well that um, uh, we get many additional collisions with the main collision where we want to find something interesting. If you know that rabbit is under the tree, we basically hide um, the uh, part of the photo which contains the tree. Now, what we want to do is to uh, figure out where the rabbit is uh, within the grass, between the uh, long grass stems. And what we are trying to do, not looking at the place where rabbit is, is to figure out how we identify these stems. If we can remove the grass from um, uh, our view, we basically would have just the rabbits. I think the most difficult thing at the moment, for example, is the time pressure. We've got all of this wonderful new data from the LHC. We've got the conference uh, coming up, and we need time to analyze the data. We need time to understand what we're doing, to convince ourselves what we're doing. And balancing all of this, the time pressure, the time to analyze the data, the time to review, the time to write is, is probably the most difficult thing. Knowing in advance where hints appeared last year could easily influence the way physicists look at the new data. This is why all the interesting data have been hidden in a black box which is just being opened now. Okay, so you've all heard about Higgs boson, but what exactly is all the fuss about? We'll explain. Remember this guy? He said everything in space, like you or the chair you're sitting in, has mass. Mass represents the amount of particles in an object. The more mass, the heavier it is. But in the 60s, Peter Higgs noticed that particles don't have volume. They appear empty. So how can they have mass? He said mass is not stuff, but something like a charge. The charge is given to the particles by an invisible field that is all around us. The Higgs field. Some particles react strongly to it, and are given a lot of mass. Other particles are hardly affected by it and get little or no mass at all. Mass causes particles to be attracted to each other, thus forming objects, creating life. 
Without the Higgs field, there would be no mass, and every particle would fly around at the speed of light. There would be, well, uh, nothing. Higgs theory became a foundation for modern physics. Others used his ideas to create more and more theories. Only problem, the Higgs field was never proven, and if it was incorrect, it could shatter everything we thought we knew about physics. So how can the Higgs field be proven? Well, you need to collide two particles and study the decay, and see if it contains part of the Higgs field, called a Higgs boson. But a massive amount of force and some super quick measuring instruments are needed. For that reason, CERN created the impressive LHC near Geneva. The LHC has the power and observatory capabilities to discover a Higgs boson. And recently, that's what scientists at CERN think they found. The discovery could lead to a confirmation of our understandings in physics, or provide us with a clean slate, ready to be filled with brand new insights of the universe. One thing's for sure, exciting times are ahead. For the people at CERN, for science, and for you and me. Thank you, Mr. Higgs.